Hi, everyone. My name is Faustina Rigoli, or Fuzzy. Uh, thank you so much to the Wheeler Center for having me. I am going to hashtag nostalgia feels and take you back to 1992. Here we go. 1992, Clayton, Victoria, 3168. <laughs> yeah, Clayton represent. <laughs> Every morning, I watch Agro's Cutting Connection <laughs> before being walked to St. Peter's Primary School by my gungung, or mama. At school, we talk about how silly Agro was, not really knowing the racist slights or the gravity of his remarks that he made at the time. I watched it back on YouTube. He's pretty bloody racist. Um, we talked about the jokes that he made about his co-host, a 20-something-year-old blonde Anne-Marie Bigger. We hope that our fan letters or drawings of Agro and Anne-Marie will be shown on national television one day. And then we go through the, that morning's episodes of The Smurfs, Scooby-Doo, the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Yogi Bear, and our all-time favorite, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> now, the conversation would always land on the one important question, one that Ella Hooper has answered. Who was your favorite Ninja Turtle? I can never say. I don't have a favorite Ninja Turtle. I like that they ate pizza, though I was more interested in what my heart was telling me but couldn't put into words. Stuff the turtles. I was more into the turtles' trusty human ally, April O'Neil. <laughs> She's the only reason why I watch the series. She's cute like Amory. No, wait, she's spunky like Amory. April is tall, smart. She wears a yellow jumpsuit and has reddish brownish hair cut into a shapely bob. She's tougher than most of the TV crew guys she works for covering the news and the crimes of New York City on the Channel 6 News. She's named after the month I was born in. Surely this is a sign that my feelings are legitimate. But I've never seen a woman like a woman before, so I keep quiet. The smart Ninja Turtle, Donatello, has a full-on crush on April. He's the turtle that spends the most amount of time with her, and the frame fixates on his gaze. And while I watch Donatello be enamored by April in front of an audience of millions of children, the jealousy within me rises and rises. <laughs> Much like how I am jealous of Agro, standing next to Amory every single weekday morning on national television. Though what I would give to be in New York City with April, I'd give up going to the Melbourne show that year. I'd give up my tuck shop money and forego my weekly sausage roll with sauce and my lemonade icy poles. I'd sacrifice my roll-ups at playtime and my push-pops after school. That's how much I want to be in April's company. I close my eyes in front of the television. When I open them again, I'm no longer in my grandparents' house in Clayton. I'm in New York City. I'm in my trackies, a pair of high tops, a backpack, and my Chinese New Year money to get me by. The turtles run past me and trailing behind them is April. April stops and looks at me and asks if I'm lost. I say no and this fantasy is going exactly to plan. I compliment her on her clever investigative journalism on the Channel 6 News. <laughs> she says thank you. I tell her that I want to work in TV one day, but not sure what doing exactly. And I ask her if she's up for hanging out. April considers this for a moment, a confident suggestion from an eight-year-old Blasian girl with an Australian-y, British-y accent. Her mind turns to the turtles. They're attempting to bust another crime. She's had similar nights like this before. She'll likely be held captive for the turtles to save her like the many times before, serving yet another hetero turtle male protagonist damsel in distress story. So she takes me up on my offer and we walk in the other direction. <laughs> New York is just like how I see and feel it on TV. Steam rises from the pavement and there's a constant buzz and energy in the air. The only comparison I can make to this was two years prior when I first heard the opening bars to Kylie Minogue's Better the Devil You Know. I'd never heard an orchestration like it before and the energy was so palpable that my eyes widened and the hairs on my arms stood tall. Running on high frequency, April and I walk the streets of New York City and no one looks at us funny like they would in Australia because New York City multiculturalism. 
Knowing April doesn't like pizza, I ask if she wants to go to a restaurant at the Plaza Hotel. <laughs> I say the Plaza Hotel because it's the only impressive New York place I know after watching Home Alone 2. The Plaza has a venue called The Rose Club, where Duke Ellington, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and Billie Holiday once performed in. It's the perfect setting for a career journalist and a kid who wishes she was a grown-up. We spend the night talking about her long 28-year life and my short eight-year one. <laughs> she was initially a computer programmer. Then she owned an antique store. Why journalism, I ask? She tells me she wants to serve the community, to bring about justice. I think this woman is more than smart. She's every woman. I teach her Chinese words that I've learnt from my grandparents at home and from my Chinese school over in Springvale. I tell her about the importance of Kylie Minogue. <laughs> and then I pull out a gift from my backpack. April unwraps it. It's a pristine showbag guide from the Herald Sun. <laughs> A very fine artifact detailing Australia's most prized treasures. <laughs> like the Bertie Beetle show bag at only two bucks. <laughs> then April sees a mixtape. I've drawn her with giant round eyeballs stuck together like Bart Simpson. Because that's the only way I know how to draw people. The words April Forever are written above her image. The tape has the songs of the last two years written in the tiny line margins with my best handwriting. And this is the first time I've really taken uh, full command of my pen license. <laughs> April takes the track list in. Songs include Sir Mix-a-Lot, Baby Got Back, Love Is In The Air by John Paul Young, Forever My Lady by Jodeci, and Real Love by Mary J. Blige. April looks up and takes a moment and then says gently, you like me, don't you? I'm completely unaware that my heart isn't just on my sleeve. It's all of me and it's expanding by the second. I lie and I tell her, I don't know. April smiles and says that I'm cute and it's okay and it's super normal and that one day a woman will love me back the way I want to. She gives me a hug. My heart is racing and I close my eyes so that I don't cry. And when I open them again, I'm back in Clayton. 2015, Los Angeles, California, 90036. It's a Friday evening and I'm sitting at Coffee Plus Milk at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. I'm 30, almost 31. It's my first ever girl get, gay girl date. I'm in my best jumper, jeans and sneakers. I see her through the glass and I am absolutely breathless. She looks like Alicia Keys. She's in a white knit dress, a small tan handbag is slung across her body and she's wearing flat tan colored shoes. She smiles and gives a small wave as she walks towards me. My body can hardly t contain all the first feelings stirring inside of me, more potent than the romantic feelings I've ever had in my entire life. And all I can do is thank God I'm alive in this moment. Thank God I'm a lesbian. And if I could kiss God's cheeks, I could. I would. She's an actress from Canada, finding her way through LA's people, culture, places, and career opportunities. I'm similar, but I'm not so sure about acting yet. We talk about race and how we fit into the spaces we desire to be in. We walk through the wings of LACMA, past a ceramic Matisse mosaic, Picassos, and rows of lampposts. We're here for the James Terrell centerpiece, Breathing Light. Drake was here recently and loved it so much he made his music video Hotline Bling look like it. But this wasn't a music video or what I wanted of music videos. This was real life. Because it's a Friday, we're there alone. We step into Terrell's space. It feels like the great beyond. Colors wrap around us. Hues of pinks shift to blues, then purples. It feels like an out-of-body experience. She's in awe of what's around us. I turn my gaze to her. Her freckles glow in the breathing light and I'm lost for words. I want this moment to last forever, but I know it can't. 
So I take all of it in, as much as my eyes can feed back to my mind and store into memory. Because this moment alone has been worth all the pain of never belonging, of lifelong anxiety, and editing myself that I almost forgot who I was. A few days from now, I'll make her a mixtape for her car ride up the coast of California and drop it off in a letterbox at the place she's subletting in Los Feliz. It's songs from home of Garamore, Josh Pike and Jonathan Boulay. I put it onto a USB and although she may never see it, I make cover art out of a picture I took of Bronte Beach and type her name over the squared image. But now I'm here with her standing in this light, and in her company, my feelings finally feel valid. Feelings I wish I had with April back in 1992. Thank you. Visit wheelercentre.com for the best in books, writing and ideas from Melbourne, Australia and the world.